Okay, hi everyone, I'm going to do another quick video uh, photo critique. I'm going to try and do it all in the time before my bath is run. Got that running. This is from Stephen Stewart. He says, Hi, I was browsing Blurb, I remembered you had some books, so I went to have a look for them, and you found one of my videos I did island hopping. Yeah, I did that, and you would have seen that book in my 70 to 200 versus macro lens video as well. Also, I've attached some photos now. I was trying to create a logo and WS, oh, was wondering if you could give me some advice on the logo. Plus, if you want to comment on the photos, it is up to you, but I've used them in uh, some of my early photos, blah, 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 blah. P.S. Love your vids. I almost forgot, you can use the pic pictures anywhere you wish. Good, I'm sending you this late. I just finished this work, and I did send it earlier, but it failed. Okay, right, okay, first one, let's go. It's because what these photos are like. Oh. Cool. Uh, the name is I Can Conquer Anything. Uh, I like that. It's a guy up a mountain. That looks like it's kind of near Glen Tress in Scotland. Maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe somewhere else. Um, and yeah, he's got his logo up the top. I like his logo. Uh, let's have a look at that. So yeah, it's got kind of like a uh, handwritten style of saying Stephen Stewart and the photography is kind of cool, kind of a beaten up looking logo, which goes very well with this mountain bike look. Um, yeah, I like that. I'm not too sure if the fading off from red works. I think just having a strong, like, powerful red all the way through would be a good uh, addition. Um, yeah, fading off, nah, 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 nah. I say make it a strong line uh, all the way through. Uh, or maybe have it under the photography uh, like that. Anyway, uh, to the actual shot itself. Um, okay, you've got the guy to the side. A the sky's a little bit blown out. If you'd use some flash, now this would be really good if you had some off-camera flash behind lighting him up, you could have brought the whole exposure down and then what would have happened is you would have had a really dramatic sky. The actual idea of the shot I think is good, however, um, he doesn't, like, if he's going to be there holding his big bike up above his head, you don't want him in the bottom or pretty much right in the ha middle of the picture. Um, he, you want to... If you were at a lower position, he would look taller, he would look bigger. He's also slightly hidden by, well, he's not hidden, but this bike is slightly hidden by the tree. So getting to a point where he would be maybe up on a rock, if there's anywhere where he could have gone higher up, um, and where there isn't the other distractions at the side, like that tree, that would be good. Um, so yeah, if you go lower or get him higher, make sure there's no distractions, uh, and then if you can, use some off-camera flash uh, to the either side uh, so that you can use a faster shutter speed or a smaller uh, aperture so you can get a really really dramatic sky. This might also be good if you use a neutral density filter on your uh, lens so you can bring the sky into more kind of saturation yet keep the ground in the actual colour or uh, brightness that you want it there. So that's a whole bunch of ideas there. Okay like that one. Let's quickly go on to the next one before my bath flows over. Okay, next shot is uh, self-portrait. Okay, you've used yourself here, um, and again, your logo up there. Now, your logo looks a little bit different. Looks like you've got, ah, well, you, I couldn't see it in the last one, but here it looks like you've got kind of a little bit of a white line at the top and maybe a black line at the bottom of your logo there, which I definitely think does look better. In a, on a black photo, this looks good, or this looks strong. However, just got to check that little bit at the side there. Uh, make sure that you, whatever you've done there, that properly fades off to total black and there isn't a little bit at the end there. Um, so yeah, on black and white, I think that logo is very cool. On a white um, image, it, it, the fading off doesn't look so quite so powerful. Uh, this is a shot of yourself looking upwards. Oh, brilliant, yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, so you're looking up and it's your logo up there. You've got a bit of a praying uh, sign on. That looks good. What I will say, though, is I think you need to somehow straighten it because you are not directly in the middle. Um, so just position yourself so that it's absolutely perfect and maybe in the editing af or afterwards just uh, make sure you straighten it because what it looks like is this shoulder is a lot lower than this shoulder. Um, but yeah in terms of the actual lighting it looks okay it does seem a little bit too oversaturated like you're losing a lot of detail here by this being like bright red and all that kind of stuff so maybe just check the white balance, calm it down a little bit uh, you have you've totally lost detail around your cheeks there. So um, and because the shadows are looking pretty darn sharp, I'm guessing you did a nude flash coming straight down onto you. Uh, so this is where maybe having a little bit of softbox would 
soften the light that's coming straight down to your cheeks so it would be so blown out. Uh, but otherwise, it, I think it's a cool idea. Uh, also, just move yourself up a little bit, uh, just a little bit, I think. I think instead of being there, so let's say your head is there and the logo's there. And I know you want to be below the logo, but instead of having your head there, I would bring it up so it's just about there. So you've only got kind of that space there. So, yeah, if you only had that space there uh, as the gap, I think that'd be better. So if you brought your head up a little bit to about there, that'd be good. Uh, but yeah, it just needs a little bit straightened. But yeah, cool idea. I like it. Um, Off-camera flash um, and good logo up there. So yeah, just straighten and do all that kind of stuff. Okay, next one. Okay, this next one is Suit in the Snow. I'm guessing Suit is your cat's name. Um, and... Uh, no, not, uh, not, uh, no, no, first of all, it looks like the eyes are blurry, uh, like, that's not blurry, like, if, if I'm wanting to see a cat shot, cat in the snow, I want to make sure its eyes are absolutely piercing through the image, uh, the, generally, the exposure on the skin, or skin, the fur is absolutely fine, but it looks like just the front of his nose is, kind of in focus, but the eyes are not. And this is this is the kind of shot where the eyes are going to be the most important thing. Um, so you needed to just slightly change your focus. It's like you had a central focus point and it's focused on his nose, not on his eyes. And it's you've obviously done with a very shallow depth of field. And, uh, and the point of interest there is out of focus. So you need to sort that out. Second thing is, uh, if you totally blacked or totally whited out the background, because I'm really confused, I'm like, what the hell is this? Is this something, dead rats, dead mice, uh, I don't know what's going on here. So I think this would be cool if you could move the cat to the side of the image and your logo up there. Uh, but uh, two problems, A, the eyes aren't sharp and there's crap in the background. Uh, so get rid of the background, move the cat to the side, uh, get the eyes in focus. And uh, also I'd say maybe up the saturation, especially with eyes as cool as that really make them pop out of the image. You don't need to up the contrast at all, but just get the saturation just like 10, 15, 20% higher uh, to make it really pop out, that'd be good. Uh, but otherwise, it's it's just a bit of an image of somebody's cat in the snow. Um, so yeah, you to make it strike, get some focus and get rid of the background even more. Next one. Okay, the next one that's come up is, what's this one called? Oh, St. Andrews. Okay, so this is just a shot of St. Andrews. Andrews Church or Cathedral or something. I don't know. I should know because I lived just across the road from St. Andrews in Dundee for 19 years of my life. Um, so I don't know what that is. Um, but uh, no, no, no. It's, it, this, this one isn't working for me because saturation is totally like, whoa, it's like a blood red building. I don't think it is a blood red building because you wouldn't have blood red shadows like that. Uh, so it's just too much, too much colour, too much enhancement going on there. Uh, you've also got this little bit of distraction there, there, there and there, which a uh, clone stamp could have taken that out. Also the angle that you're at, it really has given this, like it's like proper leaning tower of Pisa coming over, uh, which, how could you fix that? Uh, well, you fix that by going further away and doing a less of a wide angle lens. Because uh, what that is, what you're getting there is a thing called converging verticals. So the line of uh, this side of the building is pointing up to the top middle and then the line of this side of the building is also pointing, so they would meet up in the corner, you know, very top up here. And generally that can work well if you want to make a, a building look really big and powerful. The only thing is, the building here doesn't look quite big and powerful because it's not taking up the whole frame of the image. Um, you've, you've, there's this big gap space up here, all this area, just nothing kind of going on. So that's where, if you were at the other side of the building, shooting up towards it, uh, what would happen is this would take up more space and this would take up the remaining space. And it would just generally look like a much more huge image. Um, if you're going to work on making things look um, big in perspective and you're going to be having all these converging verticals, make sure you properly do it, not just kind of slightly do it a little bit. Um, otherwise it just looks like it's a building that's kind of like, oh yeah, that's is that big? I don't know, can't tell. Um, and logo here, uh, yeah, definitely it, it doesn't work with the... Well, it does work, but I think it's not nearly as cool as when it's on black. So 
um, maybe what to do is maybe think of a different logo if you're applying it onto a white image like this uh, or just having a strong black thing there, uh, strong red thing there um, but also the photography bit doesn't quite go so well with this type of image. Uh, this really is just a shot of a building, it's like art architectural photography meanwhile your kind of uh, your logo style is more kind of grungy, sporty based so um, yeah it, it's not nearly as cool uh, as the as the last ones. Um, yeah, and countdown saturation. Also, it's just a really dull day. Like, that's just a really cloudy, dull, boring day. It's like, it's not showing any kind of dramaticism to the to the clouds or anything there. Uh, so, mm, yeah, and HDR might be quite cool of that to make it look really a bit more scary. Okay, next one. Okay, and your last one is called Motorway Nightlife. And it's a road shot uh, with over a bridge, oh wait, Perth, Cooper Angus, Blair, Gary, Braemar, what bridge is that? Uh, Perth, uh, A85, I don't know where that is, I should know, I should know, but I don't know. That's not the one at Perth, no it's not, anyway, I don't know. Is it? Yes, it could be, yes, I think that might be the one, no it's not. Anyway, uh, okay, yeah, here again, this is where your logo, I think, is properly standing out, it's looking good here, uh, maybe make the S a little bit more bold, because it, actually just completely disappears there. Um, so yeah, just having maybe that little bit bolder, or maybe just having a little bit bigger there. Uh, but in general, this this isn't really that interesting a photo. Um, you've got the kind of lightning blue uh, lights. You've got this like huge, well there's a like, huge chromatic aberration, this massive blue fringing uh, going on with the white lights of the cars coming towards us um, and the red lights of the cars uh, going away from us. Um, but uh, we're not really kind of seeing what it is. It's just it's just not that that inspiring. We're needing something else here. It's it's also it just kind of seems blurry as well. What what earth is green, blue, and red? Maybe that's just like lights on the bridge. Um. So yeah, it, that to me really just looks like a picture of a motorway that's been a a long a long exposure one. Uh, but it's not really an interesting shot. Again, if this was on a photography website and I was going through photo after photo, I wouldn't stop at this one. Um, the, what, the bits where it does get interesting is this bit here, where you're seeing a bit more of the actual lines. I'm thinking you've done this handheld, because there's all this vibration going on in the cars, unless this bridge was shaking massively. Um, so that's where these lines become more like bits of lava and bits of lines, that's where it's interesting. Uh, the very foreground is, uh, or the very, very, very background is also, I'm just not understanding what I'm looking at, it's it's not enticing me into the image. Um, so yeah, it's, I think, A, make sure you've definitely got a tripod, B, do much l either longer exposure when it's less cars, I think that's what you need. Um, also, if you did this on a night with a moon out, that would be really good because then the moon would be lighting everything around the place and you'd have details in the whatever is here and the, all that would be lit up a lot more and it would look a lot more interesting. So see long time exposure shots, you either do it in places where there's lots of natural light, so if you're doing it in a city that's fine because there's loads of street lights coming down um, or doing it uh, when there's a big moon is also would also be really good or just making sure there's enough light so it lights most of the things in the in the image. In fact Let's see if I got an example. It, here's a great example. This was somebody doing a test drive of the Sony Alpha 900. And this was a 30 second exposure at f22. And here uh, it is a nighttime shot. You've got the, the street lights, which are obviously lighting up everything here. It's kind of purple in tone, so I don't know what's going on there. I think it needs to sort out the white bars. But here's just a couple of lines here which I think looks a lot more interesting than just this blur of white and blur of red. Uh, and on the other side as well, it's like totally gone quite cool. The other thing is with the small aperture, you get these great star effects coming out of the light. Um, I'll just have to tell you who took this photo. Uh, Words and pictures by Bob Martin. Um, so yeah, he's the guy that did that one. Uh, maybe check out Bob Martin's website. I don't know what it is, uh, but that was a really good nighttime shot, which I thought was much very interesting and lots of exposure on everything around the corners. So check that out uh, whenever you're doing nighttime photos. Okay, hope that helps, uh, Stuart. Um, but yeah, definitely keep working on the shots. Just keep bashing them out. Cheers. See you later. Bye bye.